Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Quite a big week for us. Um, not only have we, of course, released our Sandwich Sudoku app this week, and obviously this is the usual reminder to check it out from either our Cracking the Cryptic homepage or by going on Steam or the um, App Store and searching for Sandwich Sudoku. Um, but we've had some very good feedback about it, as well as some tips on how it could be improved, which we'll be looking at. And uh, thanks very much, of course, to Nick, our um, games designer and releaser, who's done pretty much um, all the hard work on the app itself. Um, so I hope you've been enjoying that. Certainly hope you've considered buying it. Um, and also, I think... Just about now, we're reaching 30,000 subscribers. Indeed, I hope it might have happened by the time this video gets released. Touch and go whether it will or not. Um, but thank you very much. If you're able to change that number, you know what to do. Um, do subscribe to the channel. Um, we love it if you do that. If you um, are kind enough to sponsor us on Patreon, or of course, if you buy our Sandwich Sudoku app. So, lots going on. Now... We get sent a lot of mail, as you probably know, um, a lot of puzzles that people would like us to solve or explain, or just they want to test us. And that kind of means that a lot of the mail we get sent is very difficult puzzles. And some, as we have been through before, are pretty much too difficult to really go into for a video. Um, we even got one this week from a chap who really didn't want to see me solve it because he wants Simon to do a logical solve, so I'm not attempting that puzzle. But um, sometimes I think it's as instructive to go for a, a more straightforward puzzle. And this one's a very interesting one that I came across yesterday in a Sudoku magazine by Puzzler, um, just from their medium section. So I wasn't expecting anything that was going to be too difficult, but it's got kind of a twist in the tail, this one. So I'm just going to solve along with you here. And uh, I'm going to start at the bottom. There's a couple of fives that are very useful in fixing where the five must go in this bottom left box. Um, now we know in this row, seven must be in the final box. And look where the twos are. That's very useful in those columns. That gives us a two down there. That fixes the two in this box because of that two as well as that one. And that means one of these is a two. Um, seven here helps finish um, the top two rows in this box. That gives us three, four, six at the bottom. Um, so they must be something like that. We've got four, nine, two, five here. Look at that eight. Very useful. That's giving us an eight here. Three must go there. We've got four and six to fill row eight in the central box. We've got nine and eight in some order there. This is two and one because of that one. They must be like that. Seven, six pair. And remember, these pairs are always very powerful because they, um, especially, they can't be occupied, those two cells, by any other number. Now, looking at that one that we just put in with this one, gives us a one up here. Um, but we don't know where the last one in the top boxes goes. Um, eight in column eight must be at the top here because that eight and that eight are preventing the other cells having it. Uh, two in column two in a very similar fashion must be there. We've got an eight nine pair, which is quite useful. That makes sure that fives are in one of those two cells. And the last eight at the top is now fixed by that eight and that eight. Uh, nine must be coming down here. Now, where else can we go? I mean, all fairly straightforward so far happily. Um, seven can't be here because of that seven, so seven in column eight must be in one of those two. Nine must be in one of those two. Five, what else can we do? Ah, two at the top 
has to be in the middle section somewhere. Four, four there and four there puts a four in one of these two cells, which makes this one into a one four pair. That means the other two cells are nine and three, because of that three, they must be in that order. Um, two, five, eight, so five is over there, we knew that. Okay, let's use that at the top. Nine must be up there somewhere. This must be either six or seven, just as this is. So, Nine, four, and five in the other cells. Actually, that's not very clear, but let's use this one, four pair instead here. One, four, seven, eight, nine, two in that row, and three, six in this column. So that has to be the five. We can finish the row, six and three now. So we've got a seven, five pair there. One, eight, two, nine, three. Six must be at the top. We can't sort that pair out. And this is a pair of twos and sevens, and the seven down here does resolve those. Now this is four and five. We've got seven up here. That fixes this six, seven pair. So lots of steady progress until we're getting into the middle sections here. And then it's a bit less obvious what we do next. Um, however, the twos that we've got, We've got eight of them in the grid, so the only place left for a two is actually there. And that fixes where the one is in the central box as well. Look at these ones in columns four and five, and that one there. So the only place for a one is there. Um, now, at this point, not that straightforward. Ah, this cell can only be a nine or an eight. And since there's got to be a 9 or an 8 in this cell as well, that fills the 9 and 8 for this row. So this one must be a 4. So a little bit more advanced in a way there, although there's probably some other way of coming at that. Um, that's the way I got there. Now, what else can we see? There's got to be a 4 in the central box, and this 4 and this 4 and this 4 make it here. So now we get to this position, um, seven must be either here or here, and the central box. Now what can we do with the remaining numbers? We've got seven, which must be there or there. We've got five, um, that could be in any of these three cells at the moment. Three can only be up there or down there. Nine can only be in one of the top two. And that's interesting. Now, the reason I say that that's interesting is because of a, the way I continued from this point is with a fairly weird double use of uniqueness. Now, remember, uniqueness is the technique by which the fact that we are solving a published Sudoku that has only one solution enables us to use the impossibility of there being two solutions to carry on. And if we look over here, we've got a 1-4 pair in columns 1 and 3 here. We've got a 4-6 pair in, column nine, in row 9 here. And that means that this pair of cells cannot be um, a 1 and a 6 together. If they were a 1 and a 6 together, it would be absolutely impossible to resolve this puzzle in these six cells, because whichever way around they were, they could also be the other way around. So these can't be a 1 and 6. Therefore, 6 must be in one of the bottom two cells there. And that's very important, because then where does 6 go in row 4? It doesn't go here or here. We've established that by uniqueness. Now, it could go here. Could it go in one of these two cells in columns four and five, which must contain a nine? And remember, we've got a nine-six pair up here as well. So in fact, these cells can't contain a six either, because that would give us a second uniqueness problem um, 
whichever way around six and nine were there and there, they couldn't be resolved. So those aren't six either. So uniqueness has ruled six out of the first four uncertain cells in this column. It must, in this row, it must be here. And that is honestly how I got through this puzzle. That allows us to then just carry on. Um, that's six, uh, three, four, two, eight, five. That can't be a five anymore. Three, one, four. In fact, five now. The only place a five can go in this row is here. And that can't be a five, therefore. So we've got seven and six to put in there. Five, seven, six, one now has to be in one of the top cells up here. In fact, we probably knew that from the start. That's, that's the way that I knew this couldn't have a six up here because there was meant to be a one there. Um, and I think it does finish off from here. Yes, this has to be a six. That's now what we call a naked single. And then, uh, by which I mean that there were enough other digits in its row, column, and box that there was only one alternative left. So that allows us to finish the puzzle. And that's how I solved it, which is possibly a very non-intuitive technique, not what I was expecting to need for this sort of puzzle, but it got me through it and allowed me to get to the end, which is like this. Um, what did I miss? Because this is only meant to be a medium. This is not meant to require advanced techniques. Uniqueness is normally a substitute for a more extreme scientific technique if you actually need it. So the implication is that I probably didn't need it. So here's the position where I got a bit stuck. And what I didn't notice, and well done if you have, is that the sevens here... Sorry, I should have been able to uh, put in these ones as a possibility there. The sevens in column three and the sevens in column five are both in rows three and uh, rows four and six. So the only place left for a seven in the central row is at the end here. That is how we can get rid of a five there. We've now got either five or six here. Actually, I'm not sure if that finishes it off itself. Let's see, what else can we do from that point? Hmm, not absolutely sure whether that should have been what I did to get to the finish. Um, let, let us know. Let us know what you can see to decide it. I mean, again, you could use this 9-6 uniqueness to limit the 6s to these three cells. Given that there's a 6 in one of those two cells, this is going to have to be a 6. It's the same thing again. Um, but there may be something a little more obvious that I'm not seeing. But do let us know. Let me know how you did on the puzzle overall, whether you found, like I did, that it was one of those where you can kind of sail through it and then you get a bit stuck and have to think of something. Um, or am I missing something very obvious? It's quite possible. That's Sudoku for you. And uh, there you go. A, a, it was a bizarre kind of double uniqueness combination I haven't actually seen in that form before. And I just wanted to share it with you. So thanks very much for watching. I um, hope you've been enjoying the various content and uh, see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.